another Saturday. It looks like, uh, at least from what I've seen, Blue Wave Odyssey may not have had cell service or Wi-Fi service in Tallahassee at the uh, Auto Museum at the Florida Auto Museum. So I, he may have went. He was probably he may have went live. I don't know. I wasn't able to catch it. I tried, and it. I figured, well, he's not. So I figured I'd go ahead and prep this. But RV Underway, great stream tonight. You did an incredible job. Thanks for swapping out with me tonight. Uh, it really helps with my next guest, Howie Mandel. But I, do, I really don't know if we're going to bring Howie on tonight. I might have to bump him because we got someone even more incredible. It's going to blow your mind, guys. Going to blow your mind. They're sitting in the green room right now. They had some weird requests. You know, Van Halen, when they used to do concert tours and stuff, they used to request while they were in the green room, no brown M&Ms. These guys... They wanted holy water. They wanted their water blessed. I'm joking. I don't. That was going to be a joke. I, I thought of that joke today, and it, I knew it was going to flop. But anyway, thanks, guys. People are popping in. I'll go ahead and bring Gavin and Paula up here in a second. You guys can ask any questions you want. Tonight's subject, though, that I would like to kind of touch on a little bit, and if you guys have questions about it, low-light video shooting because they're ghost hunters. Um uh, and audio equipment, audio recording equipment, and how they started, the equipment that they got, and how they kind of grew to what they are, and how some of their growth can help us uh, with our video shooting, you know, because a lot of us shoot low light. You may be at a theme park, you may be going through the Pirates of the Caribbean, and you get done, you go home, and you want to see that video, and it's too dark to see. Why is that? How can we fix that? You know, the audio, audio sometimes. You get, you're walking on leaves. You don't want that sound of the leaves. You want to hear your own voice talking. You don't want to hear the gravel under your feet. How do you get rid of all that? Is, is it through editing software? Is it through the microphones you use? We could find all that stuff out tonight. And if you guys have any ghost hunting questions or, or ideas for networks and, 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 and how to get from point A to point B to get your product created and shopped out to different networks and stuff like that, maybe they can give pointers in that. I don't know. But it's an open field, I hope. Okay, real fast, let me go ahead and see who's in here, and then I will bring our guest in. Let's scroll on up as people popping in. Uh, let's see, we got Traveling Down the Bannisters. Hello, uh, Traveling Down the Bannisters. We have Jerry Hawley. I missed your stream today, but I did catch the replay. Uh, Nomadic Hippies in the house, I see that. William Dickinson. Roy and Becky's Travels. How are you guys doing tonight? Uh, Steve, the awesome Steve Turtle. The amazing Steve Turtle. The fun, very funny Steve Turtle. James Cantonese. Uh, do I have any, uh, is, are any of my um, moderators in, just in case uh, we get any trolls and stuff? I'd like to have a moderator or two, two in the room. I don't think Bob's going to be able to pop in. Oh, we'll see. Lily, uh, Gypsy Child, hello. All right, so we got enough people in here to go ahead and bring the guest in real fast. I'll start a conversation with them. If anybody has anything to say and I miss your comment, they will be able to see the comments on the side. Plus, I'll also try and pull up the comment in the screen. So at any time, go ahead, fire off a comment. Traveling down the banisters, hello. All right, guys, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and bring them in. Looks like they're ready. And uh, let's just have a conversation, a conversation about audio, about video, about spirits. Try and make it spooky, right? Anyway. All right, Gavin. Hello. We got Gavin Kelly and Paula Kelly. I, I'm allowed to say that, right? Yes. Yep. Hello, everybody. <laughs> because in the original thumbnail I had, you guys, it was uh -huh. the thumbnail with Paula's, you know, before you guys were connected yeah. yeah that's the word i don't like saying the married word i don't want it to happen to me ever again <laughs> oh wow <laughs> no um oh wow whatever you're happily married <laughs> of course <laughs> i'm not <laughs> i mean look at us we're wearing matching shirts what do you think i think you guys look incredible and uh, like i was telling you before we were going live we can get back to our conversation about, about uh hanging out with you sitting around the table and mm -hmm. like you're sitting there with the computer showing me some of the stuff that you were working on 
and I or like when you guys were hunting ghosts that night in the mansion, and I was kind of because Paula was upstairs and I felt like I was intruding with her upstairs. And then when I was in the basement, I felt like I was intruding with you. And it was like, it's because I'm weird when I first meet people and stuff. I get, it's like, I don't know, it's not, you know, comfortable. You keep talking. Okay, okay, Paula, you, you can, he's gone, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> All right, so this, everybody, this is Paula. This, this couple is really amazing. They hang out at the Riverview Mansion. That's where I met them before. A, a few times now uh they're professional ghost hunters they have it, you could i'll let you guys uh I, you guys got so much stuff in the can it, it was like uh, in the can <laughs> in, 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 in with amazon prime and other people i i can never keep up with your podcast with the names of your shows on on tv or or any or, or any of the other stuff that you guys are doing so go ahead and let everybody know what you guys have going other than your musical career We'll point that out later because I got to bring that up. Found out. <laughs> what you just found out? <laughs> what I just found out and found out you know how to play. I guess. Um, well, we've been in paranormal for what, seven years now? Uh, see, so started in 2012. So, yep, seven years. Yeah, roughly, roughly seven years we've been in paranormal. Um, going on eight. Yeah, going on eight. We started uh basically we didn't know what we were doing so it was just basically trial and error um the reason why we got into it is she had a house fire and it uprooted some strange things happening uh, at the house so she can tell you exactly what's going on so i can beat this dog Ow. you bit mm-hmm haha -ha. are you Right on the finger. He's a puppy, and he's got sharp teeth. He does. He's a piranha. <sighs> we looked at his teeth today. Oh my! I'm going to go to YouTube on this device real fast. Lily Gypsy Child says she, that she will be a moderator for me. So you guys go ahead with your story. I'm going to make her a moderator. I'll All be right. back. Right, gotcha. Okay. Talk, well. Hold the show. Go. Go. Okay. Well, anyway. Sorry. Well, uh, anyway. Only experiencing the stuff, and uh, dog, would you stop? Um, we were investigating, uh, I had paranormal activity going on. I thought I was crazy until one day we have a dog driving us nuts back here. And um, one day there was an experience in the house that caused everyone to experience this. Um, and then that's when I said everybody agreed that we should have some kind of investigation going on. And then we had, uh, uh, and, and so that's when I got a hold of Gavin. Gavin and me, and at the time, we were friends. And he would get you more into details of what exactly we had to do in order to do the investigation. But I did a history research on my property. I do live in on actually just a little over a hundred year old house. And my land was originally part of a plantation uh, in Kentucky. And uh, basically the history and the investigation that we did kind of matched what was happening. And I wasn't totally crazy and nor was anyone in the house because of what we were experiencing. No, you're nuts. Oh, well, you are too. You married me. Yeah, we're wearing matching shirts. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, come on, you got to think about it. We uh, I, I, wind I, up wearing. I, I, go ahead. Go I ahead. messed up. I was playing with my camera and messed up. Oh. No. Oh. Wearing a groom and a in the bride shirt and ears at Walt Disney World. I mean, you serious? Yeah, I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, we're like this all the time. You are actually seeing us in the wild. Yeah, that's it. And, of course, me chasing a dog. Yeah. That's we a have a puppy. He's about 17 weeks old. He's a black lab, and he's about to drive us nuts. And he doesn't like us to not give any attention to anybody else but him. So mm -hmm. we're kind of in the same room with him, and, and we're sort of ignoring him because we're on a podcast. And he is not liking it at all. And then the cat comes in, and that really drives him nuts. Looks, yeah. look, looks like the bourbon Florida is ghost hunting tonight in St. Augustine. 
oh man, we want to go to the St. Augustine Lighthouse. I've heard that place is phenomenal. Just whenever we get the chance. I think we're going to be in Florida in August next this year. Yeah, we're filming with the new show in August. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're we're going to be in Florida. Uh, St. Augustine? No, oh, that it's, sucks. it's close to Orlando. It's Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. I'm going to take you to a place before we, we need to contact like two weeks beforehand. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to take you to a place where we have 999 happy haunts. So <laughs> Disney <laughs> World. <laughs> That's where we spent our honeymoon at. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, I'll take you. You're guaranteed to see a ghost. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. You'll see a bunch of them. Even one show up inside your, your doom buggy. Okay, so so uh, did, I, I wasn't paying attention. I, I accidentally deleted my camera. Whoops. That's why I was going in and out and in and out. So I don't know what you guys were talking about. Did you talk about your shows, your podcasts, and all of this stuff? We oh. were talking about my house and the house fire oh. and what pretty us up from getting us started into the paranormal world. Yeah, yeah. Go yeah. for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you finish up. Well, oh, no, I'm done. I, oh, no, not you. Her. Oh, go. <laughs> But yeah, basically we did an investigation and we had gotten some EVPs. We had gotten video footage and a picture of the little boy. And I had did some history research on the property and I was able to get a hold of a, of a family member that actually some of the family had moved off and I was able to get a pic, you know, I think it was the great, great granddaughter of the plantation owner. And she sent me pictures because she actually had pictures of her great grandparents and everybody that lived on the plantation. And there was a little boy that died of whooping cough at the age of five. He was his name was Freddie. And the little picture that she sent to me and the picture that we caught on the video camera is exactly a lot. It perfectly. We were doing an EVP session and we had gotten the name Frederick. And it coincides with Freddie. And the plantation house still exists. It's two doors down from my house. Uh, back in uh, early 1900s, turn of the century, 1901, 1902. Uh, at the time, divorces were frowned upon. So they were a big dominant family in this area. So instead of a divorce, the old man, Kerner, which is a cranky old man. Yeah. A uh, stubborn old man. He went ahead and gave the house to his wife and kids, and he ended up building a little two, three bedroom house, which happens to be my backyard. And the old man died pretty well much in my backyard. Old man Kerner, I have not seen him or heard from him in a while, long time. I think he's, I don't know if he's still here uh, or he travels the plantation area. Because my whole neighborhood used to be the plantation. And so we once uh, for a little while, he would pop in and let us be known that he's here. But we still have Freddie. Freddie mm -hmm. still likes to hang around. Uh, Freddie, basically, we have to be he's a five year old child. Just picture what your responsibilities of trying to control an actual five-year-year-old child and you have a five-year-old ghost child or a puppy <laughs> or a puppy and it's just interesting that you know we can coincide with him he gets a little fussy and he kind of shows himself as in we don't have any children all of our children are grown they have moved the uh out of Taos and they've all got their own places. We have adult children and we actually have uh, come home to teeny tiny handprints on the TV, on the TV and the TV is mounted up on high on the wall. Yeah. So we know it could be a cat, can't be a dog or anything. And it's actually little teeny tiny, small handprints on our TVs. We've actually had TV channels get changed. Mm -hmm. We've had shadow figures in the hallway still to this day. Um, we just have little small strange things that happens once in a blue moon. Uh, when it gets around certain times of the year, the house is more active than others. Uh, usually the first week of January is usually most active around here. And it, the main reason why is because the sad story on the end of this is that this actually is my parents' house. And my mom and dad, when they passed away, I inherited the house. 
Well, the first week of January every year, I think my parents come and visit me because I think my mom is still here. She pops in every once in a while. And I think my dad is here and he pops in every once in a while. And it's always active the first week of January because that was the week they both had passed away. But in different years. Have you ever like like you guys uh, set, like when you guys set up for shoots and stuff uh, for your like episodes and stuff like that, that that you guys do? Have you ever mm-hmm. considered doing that in your own property? Mm, no, not really. I don't want to exploit my house. I mean, my house is my private living. Well, we have set up cameras for ourselves. Yeah, we have set cameras up for ourselves just to see what's going on and everything. And I mean, it's interesting what we get when we're not home. Oh, yeah. But that's for our private viewing because some things happen when we're sleeping. And it's just one of those deals that you have a camera in your bedroom. It's not meant for you to have, you know, we don't really put a camera in our bedroom, but we put our camera in the bedroom for two reasons, security and for paranormal. So I don't think anybody wants to see me in my scrubbies. It's not time sleeping with with drool coming out of my mouth, but (laughs) so it's just one of those that I will say, I don't mind sharing pictures of things that happened in my house, but I don't, I feel uncomfortable doing footage. So uh, because you are the historian person, when you guys go, and, and say you're gonna say you're gonna highlight on one of your episodes uh, a certain build a certain house or building or schoolhouse or whatever. Uh, do you find you were talking about exploitation? You don't want to exploit your home. Uh, yeah. Do you think that the people that do allow you to do that are just doing it to exploit their so they can have a draw of crowds in, like like the Axe Murder House or something? They charge four hundred dollars a night to stay there or whatever. Do you think that they? broadcast and let it be known that this place is haunted you know and you could spend the night here for four hundred dollars and then they have people like you or ghost adventures or or uh or ghost hunters and all those shows come in there and it gives them a name so they can generate revenue or, well, or do you have actual good people that say hey yeah we want you to investigate our house because we're worried about living here yeah the last the latter yeah Really? I mean, you do residentials. We do not put, we do not film residentials for our TV shows because I think that is their private lives. Mm-hmm. Now, historical places and places like Waverly Hills, we've done what well, we filmed at Waverly Hills. Um, we filmed at the Jailhouse Pizza in Brandenburg, Kentucky. We filmed the at Best o- Pizza in Brandenburg, Kentucky. Oh, big <laughs> slice of pizza. If you is order, it good? Oh, oh, God, yeah, yes. yes. And if you order a large, be prepared because your average large that you buy at Domino's, that large is bigger than that large. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's a very large pizza. Uh, Because we had uh, a team of eight people and a large pizza covered eight people and everybody had their fulfill of the pizza. Yeah, it was one heck of a you guys live in Illinois, though. You have the Chicago stuff, them big, thick pies. Oh, um, uh, we live in Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Well, close enough to Illinois. You live right across the river. Yeah. So, have you ever went to Keith Holtz Hillbilly Gardens and Toyland Museum and did a ghost hunt? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, we, we, know, we have done a ghost hunt, hunt, but we know Keith personally, yeah. and he has told me about the mysterious graveyard that's in the back of the property. Um, his wife has told me about the Civil War soldier that they have seen walking through the back part of the toy land. Um, but we have not yeah, he's actually watched him. He'll watch the replay of this. So, <laughs> <laughs> so as far as you know, I love Toyland. I always I have not been out there in a while because I know he's always adding new stuff to it all the time. But um, my favorite is the uh, the lawnmower graveyard. And the, uh, the, I guess you call the redneck, uh, space shuttle is my two favorite things oh, they have yeah. out there. Isn't yeah. that cool? Keith, <laughs> he's awesome. He's, he's a great guy. His whole family's awesome. I, I took my Segway over and let the kids run away with my Segway. Oh, no, no. <laughs> we got a, we got a question from Happy Place Camping. You might take this one. It says, uh, since your whole neighborhood was a plantation, have your neighbors had experiences 
Yes, they have. We have had to have actually, we have investigated not only my house, but we investigated the house that was across the street, which doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. It's gone. We've got some incredible evidence from there. We have neighbors that has talked to us about things that happened in their house. Some people doesn't want us to come in there and investigate, but we have shared our experiences as a neighborhood, though. You got another question, too. Where at? Captain so Jack Scrapper says, so why do they put round pizzas in a square box? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there was something else up here. I scrolled by it. Not happy place camping. I'll get to yours. Uh, there was one. Uh, I think it was a suburban asked something uh, because she has uh, not the scary noise one suburban. She had she was. uh not the, oh did you text the bourbon about the lighthouse because she can get you guys in yeah 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 oh, oh because i was scrolling up because there was a lot of questions down here and she's replying back in the yeah i've got there's one that says i would like to know what was the most scariest thing you've ever seen i've not well i don't really call it scary it's an experience yeah we have been to a location that was i don't know if you really call it demonic but we had a poltergeist that was able to pick up. Oh, that one? Yeah. Five-inch deep weld yeah. sockets and throw them. Yeah. Yeah, you were talking about that the other day. On mm -hmm. the, the, the nails thrown at you. and I had a nail thrown at me, yeah. but uh, we had an investigator that was with us that got hit in the back with a piston that was that big. Wow. And uh, five-inch deep weld sockets were flying around. And let's see, you guys have to come to Gettysburg. We have been to Gettysburg. Gettysburg yes. We were there last year at, at the Gettysburg Battlefield Bash. We had a booth there. I'm going to go shoot the dog. Yeah. All right. And, and, and then while you're shooting the dog, I got a couple questions for you that from when you were first starting. I'm not taking notes. Oh, so, okay. Um, so you were talking about the little boy, uh, the little boy ghost in the photographs. Yes. I believe. Now, yeah. uh, because we're YouTubers, this is a YouTube community, and we don't have the equipment that you guys have. So, and 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 I take it that that was done a long time ago that that photo was taken. Was yes. so was that taken with a cell phone? No, that was done on a thirty-five millimeter camera. What was the picture of the little boy? Oh, the one on showed up on the view screen. Yes. And it was a high eight video camera. Yeah, it just showed up on the view screen, not on the camera itself. If you go through and look at the footage, the camera is, is actually facing in their room. All you're going to see is night vision of the bed and the wall. That's it. It was. It shows up on the view screen. I wish so, I had it on here. I could show it, but I, I, I don't. Yes. I gave you enough time. What's up? You were supposed to find all those awesome photos. Hmm. What was I dealing with while we were talking? Uh, talking. <laughs> what else? Like I said, the, the only dog, thing that's good in this house is our bearded dragon. He's the only good one in the house. Yeah, the bearded dragon. He's he's <laughs> calm. He's quiet. <laughs> he keeps to himself. Uh, for anybody out there, this this is a paranormal phantasmic journeys uh, YouTube channel, I believe. Yeah, it's our YouTube channel. Yep. Yep. If you guys want to go see see that and check them out, that they would really appreciate it. I'm sure. Yeah, on that channel, we actually have three seasons of our podcast. The first season was our experimentation using three cameras. So we are actually live with three video cameras. It was a video podcast. And during that season, we talked to gear designers, um, location owners, authors, um, some people that are on the paranormal uh, TV shows. And then season two and three are all audio but we are talking to para celebs like katrina weidman the ghost brothers we talked to a bunch of people from ghost hunters uh paranormal lockdown so if you guys want to go listen to all those awesome we're going to have more uh later this year we're probably going to have like um, rob lowe we're going to have nick groff elizabeth saint a bunch of other people that are going to be uh on our podcast but besides that, I'm showing other stuff on there about editing, like uh, the little baby Yoda thing I did with Michael Buble, uh -huh. and uh, how I redid the Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer the way I feel it should be, because you got to put Ray Parker in there. You got to. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of depressed they're not doing that. Well, I know, right? Uh, yeah, but right. Uh, You can see all that on the channel. The Rob Lowe? Yeah. Okay. 
Just just check it because there's <laughs> other Rob Lowe's, but I figured if it's the Rob Lowe, it's the I'm, Rob I'm, Lowe. I'm tuning in. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to talk to him about the, the low files when they had only one season. I never even heard of the low files. Yeah. He, he, they came up with yeah. their own paranormal TV show called The Low Files. And it's with his two sons. Yeah. They're pretty good. Oh, that, that's kind of cool. Uh, Suburban says, uh, we had a rock thrown at us at Bobby Mackey's, but that place is insane from what I understand. Yeah, and I have never been told. You've never been to Bobby Mackey's? No, I've been there, but uh, it's not what it's all cracked up to be. People yeah, are experiencing, yeah, people are hallucinating down or experiencing hallucinations downstairs in the basement due to the fact that if you go right around a the corner, there's this big, huge transformer that's down there. It'll yeah. fry your cell phone, your radio, anything electronic. Of course, it's firing off a lot of EMF. So while you're down there, you're going to experience hallucinations. So that's really and nobody, hallucinating. Yeah, nobody ever talks about that, what's downstairs. No. They always just show the well or where the head was or, you know, and all that stuff. They never show that they never yeah. show the power that's coming through that. Place. And, and that's not a portal to hell. It's just a regular drainage vat when it used to be a brewery. Yeah. Yeah. But I would say the, the, the place that everybody goes to like Waverly, that, that tunnel, the death tunnel or whatever is more of a portal to hell than Mackey's. <laughs> no, yeah, well, I guess. I mean, it's the last place where they go. But yeah, I mean, yeah. we've been to Waverly. I've been there a long time ago, and then I decided to take her. And um, it was the first time I went. Now, this is kind of cool. I mean, Waverly is oversaturated, of course, because, you know, millions of people go there. So it's kind of like Gettysburg, where Gettysburg is still highly concentrated with paranormal activity due to the fact that it was the bloodiest battle. But you know, there's still concentration there of paranormal activity. Well, Waverly is similar to the same. But um, I went there in, what, 2012? I think so. 2012, I went there. This is without her. And um, I invited another team to come out. They were called Darkness Paranormal Society. And we were down on the first floor with the morgue. And he was doing the SB7. He's asking questions like, he's like, well, what what room are we in? And he covers it up. And it's like, and it pops up and says morgue. And he's like, oh, sweet. Like that. And all of a sudden, I walk through the threshold and, and it goes, Gavin. He's like, dude, it said your name. So that was kind of cool. That was like yeah. the best part that happened. I go back and take her and our crew. And then we invited 10 investigators to come with us. I mean, we had people flying in from London to film with us. We had people from Boston, Ohio, all coming in to join us to film our episode at Waverly Hills. And we walked into the morgue area again, and I was like, all right, I was here many years ago. This is what's phenomenal. I was like, I walked through the threshold, and you said my name. What is my name? And I pulled up a device on my phone, and it said, Gavin. We had three recorders, picked that up, and two cameras. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. They remembered me. That's great. Where can we see that episode? Is it on Amazon Prime Video? It's in post. Oh, okay. Seasons, seasons two and three of Paranormal Journey is currently getting network scouted. So once it gets picked up by a network, season two becomes season one. Season three becomes season two. So we're still waiting on that. That's kind of in limbo right now. But what we're working on now is uh, Truth or Legends in Your Hometown, which we're going to start filming again in March. We already successfully filmed season one, uh, November of last year. Well, I got uh, two things here. I got the question that I got up on the screen, or, or a thing from Happy Place Camping up on the screen. Then Suburban brings up a good point here about The Rock. Because uh, at Mackey's, she did. Here, I'll pull. Let's do hers first because that was the last thing we talked about. I see that. She said it's full of EMF. You're right. <laughs> but you, how do you explain the rock? Now, because I know people that have been in Mackey's and have like pieces of brick or, or, mm -hmm. or stuff thrown. How do you, yeah, that's hard to explain. Uh, well, I do believe the old man still haunts the place. Well, Carl. Carl, yeah. Yeah, Carl's possibly still there, although it could be something that was falling from the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. There, everything could be explained because I don't believe in spirits and specters. Oh, I mean, I can sleep down in the morgue because Miss Lori told me if I want to put a cot down there, I can sleep down there all night, and it's nice and dark in the morgue. There I you go. Sleep, and I, I would feel comfortable down there. I think. 
My mind might play tricks on me. I don't know. We'll go down uh, there in the morning and go, hey! <laughs> no, I'll be like Scooby-Doo and Shaggy. I'll be in the kitchen while they're sleeping all the time. You take <laughs> so Happy Camping Place says, uh, we toured the prison in Jefferson City, Missouri. Okay. Bubby got his hoodie pulled. I won't lose it because you're... No, I need to say. No, it. I want to blow it up. Uh, well, we can't really see it well, but here's a picture of the little... Bo oh, boy, we can't see yeah, it. Yeah, that's the reason I yeah, need to save it. I know. So I pull it up on, you want to pull it up on the screen? Yes. Yeah, send I've it, got send to, it to me. save it the first. Oh, okay. She's going to save it and send it to me, and then I'll pull it up on my... Uh, right uh, there, screen. I'll pull it up on my Facebook, and everybody can see it. Okay. Uh, so real fast, which one of you two is the smartest at, at, at uh, all the, it, 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 because she does a historical stuff. <clears throat> She's smart towards the historical stuff. And then you're smart towards the, I mean, do you guys uh, work with each other on that? Do you ever help with the historical stuff? And, do, and does Paula ever help you with what you do? Do you just work as a team totally? Smart was a stupid word. I mean, it, 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 I don't touch the historical stuff. Cause no. if I do, she gets mad. Yeah. I'm one of those. I, I have a procedure that I use on digging up stuff. It's even leading to going to the basements of courthouses and going through old files. And there's a lot of intense stuff that I do. I, there's, I know a lot of stuff has went digital, so it, it kind of helps easily with doing stuff. But uh, other than that, it's just one of those... It didn't go through. You, you, were you guys the one that investigated, you know, the building right next to Superman statue, that courthouse or whatever? Were you guys yep. the one that yeah, we had, yeah, we investigated that. And uh, what we did at the time, we didn't really think we were going to do this, but we did. I went Facebook Live, and she went Facebook Live. And then we joined up together, and we're both doing Facebook Live while we're investigating the Massac County Courthouse in jail. And we had 32 thousand people watching wow. and they all got to see what we experienced the rope twirling around by the ladder uh someone running you could hear them the footsteps leaving the courtroom the door opening and shutting uh me getting pushed down the stairs with a four thousand dollar camera the the stairs that go down towards the the uh fallout shelter uh no we're inside going from the second floor to, to the first floor i think it was inside oh. The courthouse. Oh, okay. I, I I've snuck inside, and you know nobody's ever in that entire place. So, I but uh -huh. I, I I got that feeling in there. I got that feeling. So traveling down the banister says I got to do a flashlight tour with the owner of Weston Trans Allegheny Asylum. I don't know where that is. Uh, you're that talking about there? Rebecca Gleason. You got to do a flashlight tour with Rebecca. She's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and you'll be able to see uh, this picture that I was telling you about. So give me a second. Oh, boy. Oh, that didn't work, did it? Share my entire screen. Oh, everybody sees it now. Can you see my screen? No. No. Oh, well, crap. You have to touch it in the box. So when your screen's there, it just touches this. Not oh, I, I see it. I see it. I see it. Or or the website. It'll say link if you hit All the right. link. Do you okay. see it now? You see the little, see the picture? Did we lose them? No, I don't know. Wow, that's creepy. Okay, did you guys see it? I seen an image on there. Did you but see it? Was, I seen it. Okay. Yeah, I lost audio when we did that, so I'm not going to do that again. Oh no, it's okay. You didn't lose audio. You were coming through. I mean, I shut my mic off when you did that. Oh, okay, okay. Because I was just like, wait a minute. I didn't... Wait a minute. We lost him. I was like, ah. so. But yeah, that that was a little boy that showed up on the uh, um V screen, and you saw it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> I could say I, I want to see it face to face when I come to visit. Uh, because uh, it, it's better for me that way. But I seen it in that just now. So Suburban also says, we got to meet Jason and Grant from Taps in St. Augustine. I met them all at Halloween Horror Nights a couple times. They used to come they, every year during Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios. They they pop in there. Hmm. Try uh, Zach from uh, Zach is from what? Ghost Adventures? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't. He's fake. Yeah. <laughs> 
Have you been to his museum? It's so hokey. I am friends with everybody on the crew, except Zach. He, he, that one Halloween night when he was like really egging it on and egging it on, and then and then they didn't edit it, and it was just like the worst video or TV show ever. You find out everything is fake. Oh, the one, the one with the Dybbuk box. Yeah, it was yeah, just. Was I said because I used to love his show, and then I find out the whole thing is fake, and I go, "Man, you just ruined me." I was enjoying every single episode of your shows. Yeah, yeah. you know, go, Ghost Hunter. I think the Ghost Hunters had a great show, you know. Yeah, but do you? Uh, that uh, someone just wrote that in here too. But the comments are coming in pretty fast. Um, do you think the market is oversaturated with ghost hunting TV shows, network, or or uh, internet? I believe that uh, the networks believe that the paranormal is a gold mine, and they are putting crap shows on. I mean, there are just so many that are just coming out of the woodwork. And frankly, they just don't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, there's one called Trending Fear, where they're actually using their cell phone that shows that they're videoing. Like, I, like I'm doing like this. I'm, I'm videoing her, right? Mm -hmm. But yet when you look at the screen, the record thingy is not even red. So how are they getting footage from their phone? It's simple. They film it with a regular camera and they put an overlay of a cell phone. It's just crazy. It, it, uh, but people, people get, they just, they don't even look at that stuff. They're waiting to see reactions. They're waiting to see what's yeah. around the corner in the dead silence. Yeah. So traveling down the banister says that uh, that place is in, it, it's in Weston, West Virginia. Yeah. And oh, Joe Jordan. Jordan. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you guys want to know the best shows to watch, uh, of course, Ghost Hunters, the new one with Jace, with uh, Grant and Brian and Brandon and Gustavos, Gustavus, all of them, they're they're awesome. I'm not just saying it because you know half of them are all my personal friends, but still. Yeah. And um, Destination Fear with my buddy Dakota. Yeah, yeah, that, that is an awesome show. I like the way he's doing it though, because the fact is he is bringing his sister and best friend yeah. along, and he's putting them into hell. The, well, <laughs> it's not just their hell. Everyone has a personal fear of something. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it might be a paranormal fear. It might be a water fear, a height fear. Everybody has some kind of fear. Spiders and snakes. And destination oh. fear feeds. They put them in there to to defeat their fears. Yeah. And their fears are being in a location by themselves. And I like the way Dakota goes where they all do a group thing. And then afterwards, everyone gets put in a section by themselves. Yeah. And they all have a fear of being by themselves in a haunted location. And they all have that real personal fear. Did, yeah. what, but now before we get to more equipment stuff, because I do want to touch on a few things on that. But, uh, oh, God, I'm having a brain fart right now. Oh, you know that, that guy that tortures people in Tennessee and calls it something manner? It, it, and he preys on people's fears the same way, but he'll like duct tape you up and pour pig's blood on you and, and all this crazy stuff. And if you survive the night, you get like $20,000 cash and you have to sign all those waivers. And Not it's supposed to be some haunted manner. Never I'm, heard of it. Yeah, it's, it's some famous guy in Tennessee and you sign all these waivers and then it, you have to watch a three hour video on YouTube and then you have to find like a 20 page waiver. And then, and then he films everybody giving up. Some people don't even get out of their car and they give up before they even attempt to do the manor. Huh. No, never heard of it. Yeah. And everybody, uh, the, all the, uh, most of the ghost hunting people and stuff are, are the haunted attractions. Like I have some friends that have one at Kissimmee called uh, Mortem Manor. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, everybody looks down on this guy really bad because it's not real, but he's preying on people's fears and he's really causing damage. Right. Uh, but I, it's not like your guys' friends, but yeah. Uh, what is this? Outside of taps, most of these shows have lost all of the science behind parapsychology. They are making a mockery of science. True. Well, science is played. In uh oh, where did they go? They logged off. Hold on, Gavin. You're still here. 
uh, up at the football season for Gavin. We lost Gavin. He actually hit the button. Oh, no, he's back. Never mind. Weird. Hey, you're back. I was just putting the link back in. We lost the uh, the the chat and all and everything disappeared. Okay, you back now? Or yeah. Everything? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, yeah, a lot of the TV shows, it's all about the cash, whatever. Well, yeah, I'm, reality, I'm, you know how like I'm, reality shows are fake? Most oh, yeah. Well, fake. I, I made a comment about the whole science thing because, you know, you have to have your hypothesis and your procedures and all that stuff. Theoretically, you can't do paranormal in a scientific way no. because you cannot have a controlled environment unless you want to lift the location up and put it inside a big huge plexiglass box it ain't gonna have scientific uh principles to go ahead and uh investigate it scientifically because you have to have a controlled environment a haunted location is not going to be controlled at all because you're going to have cracks in the walls you're going to have you know, drafts coming in, creaking noises. You're going to have all the uh, natural elements occurring inside the location. So you're, theoretically, you can't do a controlled environment. So trying to do it, to investigate it scientifically is kind of hard because you can't follow the steps of the scientific principles. Plus also, you can go to a location, me and you could go to a location and never get anything. Of course. But yet another team can get awesome stuff. Oh, yeah. So it's also bearing on, number one, like we always say, ghosts and spirits don't have a time clock. They're not going to check in and say, hey, I'm going to work the six hours just for you, buddy, and then clock out. I mean, spirits are there. It depends on the communication, and it also depends on the person that comes in there to talk to them. A lot of people, a lot of teams go in there, and they're demanding. They're wanting you to give them proof that you exist. For us, we don't do that. We go in there and have a conversation like me and you are having right now. We go in there with the mind that there is somebody there they might want to communicate with us, but they might be don't want to communicate. Two, they're shy. Uh, we've had times that we've went in there and not get nothing for three hours. Then all of a sudden, since they get warmed up to us, or we've actually spent the whole weekend at a location. And all of a sudden, after we've been there for a while, then they start warming up to us. Or for me, I'm an empath and a sensitive and yeah. I can go to certain areas of a building and I can sense when there's something there and I can feel hey, there's his cat. Uh, <laughs> bugging me. I have to hold her. She's biting my hand. So. <laughs> and uh, it's one of those things that I can feel off emotions. And sometimes there's certain places that we've been that I've only been to two locations that actually extremely bothered me. And those locations, I could tell you what, you know, they were feeling or I felt uncomfortable or I felt I just needed to leave and not come back. And and one of those locations was called Melvern Manor in uh, Melvern, Iowa. Mm -hmm. And it was the attic. And I went up in the attic and I said, it's time for me to go. Because whatever was up there did not want me up there. And I felt it was a very dreaded situation where you felt dread, you felt hurt, you felt harmful, and you just felt like he knew that you felt what he was feeling. And he just basically was trying to push you away, and you just felt very uncomfortable. Yeah. And when we went up there to investigate, I was not going up there by myself because I felt that much uncomfortable. And Melbourne Manor was one of those places all the way around. It was the first time I ever got scratched by an unknown yeah, source. Uh, that was fun. That was from, <laughs> a, we were in Hank's room. You guys are crazy. Getting scratched by a spirit is fun. Oh, well, she was like, had the camera on. And, I and, had my hands full. There was just no way that I yeah. could have scratched myself and where it got scratched at. She was like, Hank, what is your problem? Why are you always taunting women? Do you get a kick out of it? And all of a sudden, she started, she was like, oh, like this. And she's like, I'm feeling a burning sensation on my back. And I'm like, yes, you got scratched. She goes, although I'm not sharing your enthusiasm, come over here and look. And I did. I had scratch marks all down the center of my back. And I had, yeah, and I had a recorder in one hand and, and, a, camera in the other. and a camera in the other hand. So there was no way I could do it myself. And I had her on camera so at the you time. Had that covered. Speaking oh, yeah. of cameras, uh, because a lot of us start YouTube and stuff like that with minimal mm -hmm. equipment. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people just start using their cell phones and stuff like that. Uh, what kind of equipment did you have when you first started and, 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 and how bad was the quality <laughs> of the stuff when you first started and, and how long did it take you to get to a certain level to where you are now actually working and, and producing shows for television? So the very first camera that we had, uh, was a Sony high eight with the cassettes, the big, huge oh. cassettes. That are like forty dollars a piece now. Yeah, they are. <laughs> hey, let me answer this question here real quick from Suburban saying, "Yeah, but to claim every blip is paranormal, that orb bug, that draft, uh, AC, that pop temperature change, just isn't cool." I agree with that, but here's the thing: in our time investigating, we have seen one legitimate, one hundred percent orb. We saw it with the naked eye. Yes. Because it gave out its gave off its own luminous in pitch blackness, pitch dark, and it it showed up. It looked like it was a lightning bug, but there were no lightning bugs in there. So that was the very first one. And I've always told uh, investigators what they can do is you need to build a little rig. You put a infrared camera right next to a regular camcorder that cannot see in the dark. Mm-hmm. Have them both recording at the same time. If you happen to see something on the infrared, but you don't see it on the uh, regular camera, it's dust, it's pollen, insect, stuff like that. But if you see it show up on your regular run-of-the-mill camera that cannot see in the dark, then you possibly captured an orb. Because it's illuminant. or it's yes. illuminate. It has its own illuminant. It, it glows. It also can cast a shadow sometimes, too. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. We actually had something that was actually in front of it and it cast a shadow right through it, which was really cool. I and gotta it, find more pictures of that. Yeah. <laughs> so but, uh, the draft and stuff, you know, we, we gotta talk about the draft and and the, and the blips. I mean, you have to kind of go into a place and you do a baseline sweep. What that basically means, you take your EMF meter, like a mel meter or an eddy or something like that, and you get readings, baseline readings inside the location throughout the whole place, all the rooms, and just make a special note of that. And then when you go in at uh, night, of course, then if you get spikes all over the place, then it's possible there's something there. But you always have to do your baseline because if you don't, and then you go in there and you get like a milligauss 6.2, it's like, oh, crap, wow, it's a ghost. Well, you didn't check it the first time. It could be uh, a leak somewhere. It could be electrical leak. It could be something that's given off huge amounts of EMF. So. It could be me walking around a corner with holding a cup of coffee. And, oh, hey, what are you guys doing? Probably. <laughs> yep. Uh, Suburban says, yes, those I will agree with. We've had one orb that I can say we couldn't explain because it followed directions and moved where we asked it to and had its own light. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. like you're saying about the light, it produces its own illuminescence. Mm-hmm. Well, we had a strange one that happened at the uh, Ashmore Estates. A little red ball showed up on the thermal, and I was sitting there holding the, the thermal uh, gun on it, and we're watching this ball go up, over, swirl around, come back. And I kind of like move, moved the thermal away from it. And I'm looking going, I don't see nothing there. Go back to it. And there it is. I'm like, move it again. I'm like, huh. It was actually, I don't know. I, I can't explain that one. I, we could not see it with the naked eye, but the thermal camera was seeing it. That's kind of cool, too. That I one may, I can't explain. I may be getting depressed right now. RV Kid says, I'm still bummed now that I have the wrong gimbal after listening to me. Did I, you don't like the gimbals, the the DJI gimbal the, that I told you that you, uh, after doing that, you should love it. I think you should get the, the pocket, but if you're going to get a, a handheld gimbal for your phone, the Osmo 3 is the only way to go. If you're not happy with it, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> uh, I, I, I think if if you're talking about that, I, I think I think it's the one you should have still. If I don't I don't know if that's what you meant. Yeah, if, we have a uh, we have a Glide Gear Lilos for our uh, camera for our cell phones. It goes up, holds 
any type of phone, which is really mm -hmm. cool. And of course, for DSLRs, we have the uh, Glide Gear Geranos. What do you think about the Ronins and stuff? I don't have a Ronin. We have a Zion, and we also have a Moza Air. I, I, last night on my live, or the night before last, when I pulled up the Moza website because I was looking for that one Moza that had a square bottom, looked like a drill almost, a handle on the yeah. side. It was a weird looking gimbal. I think they came out about two years ago for like three ninety nine. Right. And I was trying to find that because I was uh, somebody was asking about Moza, and I said it's a great company that they, they oh, make yeah. a great. Company. But oh, I, yeah. I'm a, but I'm a, I'm a DJI fanboy, so what are you going to do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm waiting for DJI to send me some stuff to test. Yeah, I, I'm the lucky one. You guys have yeah, have all the stuff going for you, and I'm the one getting the stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know, right. Suburban says we always put tape on the walls and mark the EMF levels on our initial walkthrough. So for uh, future trips, though, or through, if we get difference, we can note it in the video. I I, 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 I never even seen your videos ghost hunting, Suburban. I'm gonna have to check that out. I've I've watched you walk through the Saint or, or like uh, down by Port Orange. It wasn't the Saint Augustine Water Tower or that you guys or the lighthouse that you guys went through last time. I forget what one it was. Ponce Inlet, I think, and uh, yeah, but I didn't. I didn't. Never thought you guys went ghost hunting or or, <laughs> or e exploring like that. That's kind of cool. I'm getting to know you guys more and more, suburban. You'd be surprised uh, who does ghost hunting. They never really tell you because they don't want people to think they're nuts. That's the reason why we don't go around telling people what we do. If we start talking about it and it kind of leans toward the conversation, then we'll talk about it. Like how we met you. We didn't come right out and tell you we're ghost hunters. Well, Lori kind of told you. You didn't need to tell me. Somebody told me in the kitchen before you guys opened up and came out. That was Lori. <laughs> yeah, we normally start off and say, hey, nice to meet you. Hey, we're ghost hunters. No. Yeah. We, we no, she'll she'll sit there and feed you. And, and I go, hey, you guys got any guests tonight or last night? Did you guys have, are you guys been busy? And then she'll say, oh, we got some ghost hunter team in here. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and that gets me all excited. I go, what are they going to find? This place isn't haunted. There's no ghost here. But <laughs> I know, I know. Hold on, hold on. You remember, you were down there while we had a bunch of people wearing the helmet, and you heard on that devil jersey box, come on, friend, as uh, Chelsea was walking up the stairs. Uh, yeah, but... There was nobody that you said that. You that you were just trying to freak me out. No, that happened for real. That was right then and there. People were like, did you hear that? I'm like, yeah. And then Chelsea's like, all right, Adam, let's go. Yeah, Adam <laughs> follows Chelsea around in the in the mansion. Yeah. Do you ever, like me and Paula were upstairs, and we were talking about you downstairs behind your back. Uh, <laughs> okay. Because you, got, you guys were all around a table with the Thor hat. Is that what that's called? What's the Thor hat called? It's called the Thor hat. <laughs> no. Yeah. Loki, it's a ghost Loki, helmet. Loki it's back hat. there. It's back there. Can you see it? It's right above Paula's head. I see the, I see the Christmas tree. But yeah, uh, yeah, we're lazy. But so you're downstairs at the big table with a, a large crowd around you, and and you're te and you're telling everybody well, you're in the morgue. It is the morgue area. I mean, that's yeah. the morgue area. But hey, the yeah. actual morgue is behind. Yeah. Would you guys look at the this? helmet? First, there was the cube. No, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, a, this is a ghost helmet. It has four magnets. Oh, four sorry. magnets on each side that go ahead and shoot off around by your ear. And no, you're not going to get cancer. But uh, there's also lights up here that will go off in different synchronization. And uh, if you wear this and you close your eyes, you will actually start to see things. I'm not talking about hallucinating, but you will, I don't know, it's really bizarre. We've had people that we never met put this thing on during our event. And the stories that they were telling us, they didn't even know that the mansion was originally a hospital. Yeah. And they didn't even know that it was used during World War II. We didn't tell them that until she told us the story. And, said, and that's when we said, well, you do know that you, you are actually in the morgue. This used to be a hospital. And the one lady that was uh, put it on, she said that she saw a man in a military outfit with a, a, a child next to him, and he's patting his head. 
and he's all full of bandages. And when uh, the guy looks on up and notices that she is looking at him, she started crying. She was in tears. Had to have me pull this helmet off her head, and she left and didn't come back. <laughs> that that is insane. I, it was. It, the, I mean, before, when the, when the one person was wearing it, was it Paula was wearing it downstairs at first, and then if she was no, nah, she, nah, she didn't wear it. We were oh, in our room, and I had the water experience. Yeah, we did an experiment in our room. I'll tell you about that here in a minute. Yeah, we did an experiment. I remember, in our room. I remember when you were zeroing it in. And then the lady that was had it on says, I see a red light. And I, and I was thinking to myself, well, yeah, there's a red light flashing above your head. You're going to see a yeah, red light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you zero it in. And it, it, it's like we talked about before, like a TV, how it all comes to you. Well, what happens in. is when you have it on and the lights are synchronizing, pretty soon the red disappears. And all of a sudden you see a big white orb in front of you. And then it just disappears and you're able to see things. It's kind of like... For sensitives, empaths, and psychics, their third eye goes in full bloom, and they start seeing things. That I mean, crazy. Yeah, I mean, we had one person that was sitting there, and he was silent, and all of a sudden we saw him go jerk back like that. And I'm like, what the heck happened? He goes, well, I saw a gurney and a man sitting on it. He turned and looked at me, and then he was right in his face. Just like a horror movie. Yes, and he just like jerked back like that and wanted the helmet off. Well, I had one in the basement too, and this guy experienced the whole thing Go. of the doctor and the nurse standing over them, and next thing you know, uh, a sheet was pulled above his head, and oh, there yeah. was total darkness. He got to actually see himself die. That is insane. Well, guys, we have like four minutes left. Oh. I know I want to keep going, but they got me leaving here and I got to be in Atlanta at 6 a.m. So I got to pull an all nighter. Okay. And then, I, and then I got to be in North Carolina later in the day. So it's like I got to, and, and I, so I only have like so many hours, seven hours, I think, to get to Atlanta. And I still got to hook to my trailer. But I just, I, I wanted, I, I didn't want to blow this off tonight because I know Blue Wave Odyssey had a hard time probably going live tonight where he was. And, and, but we started a little bit early. So that was good. I, but what time is it? I, let me see what time it is. Yeah, ten o'clock's coming up my time, so I got to get going pretty soon. But man, you guys are—we didn't get to no camera, no audio, no nothing. So hopefully, <laughs> one of these days, I can have you guys back on. And and yeah. I, I, I'm really hoping that everybody enjoyed uh, Gavin and, and Paula tonight. And if, I'll, I'll let you guys go ahead and ask a couple more questions if you want, real fast, and then we'll do a little bit of growth. Check out, and you guys got to check these guys out on YouTube. They're going to get some content up there that's. Hope you know they already got the podcast, and and I, I that's what I do. I drive down the road listening to podcasts anyway, so because I can't view video. So your podcast yeah. on Google Keeps great. Um, okay, yeah, so our new season's going to start up the first week of March. Our new season of our podcast will be coming back on Wednesday, so it'll be up and running on YouTube soon after that. That I'm, I'm looking forward to the Rob Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's her crush. Yeah. Oh, is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. When I told her that I'm, I'm going to have uh, Rob Lowe on, she's like, oh! <gasps> well, I, I don't know if you guys ever watched Psych. Did you guys ever get hooked, uh, hooked on Psych, the TV show? No, Stop. we did watch the uh, um, <clears throat> the Samurai one. Well, uh, well, yeah. Well, there's it's a comedy show and it's all '80s related, even though it's modern times. You know, kind of like oh, okay. things, do. but it's a funny show. And they're the psychic, fake psychic detective. Uh, kind of, uh, it's a it's a funny show. But every every one of the Breakfast Club people is always on that. You know, they always have guest appearances. And there's a serial killer, a three episode serial killer one, uh, Rob Lowe and uh, uh, from what's the one girl from Breakfast Club, Ali Sheedy. She's like a serial killer on it. And she's psycho, but it's so, they're so good on that. And yeah, I, I would look. Have you met Rob before? No. Oh, so is it going to be a phone in or a video like this? It's be a uh, phone, phone in because we have it. We'll be on our live radio station because we have a radio yeah. station too. Yeah. Well, I also have. I'm a DJ for a country radio station. <laughs> so you sing. You got an album. Mm-hmm. 
that everybody could check out where. And it's a good album. I'm not in the country. You, you, you blew it away. Yeah, you can get my album on CD Baby. You can get it on Spotify, Reverb Nation, Amazon, uh, iTunes. You can get it anywhere. Just look for Gavin Kelly, Honolulu Blue, and you can find my album. I, I, I wish I could find a uh, link for it to put in here. Uh, if you have a Facebook page, and you posted yeah. it, and you shared it in Facebook today. So mm -hmm. yeah. look yeah. up Gavin Kelly on Facebook, you guys, and, and you can find it. Just go yeah. through his feed. Uh, unless somebody just unless RV Kids has posted it, no, that's the YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got uh, we have both have Facebook, we both have Instagram. He has Twitter. I got everything for social media. Are you yeah. kidding me? You need it, you need it I now. Barely keep, I barely keep up with Instagram and uh, Facebook. Yeah, I'm friends with Paul. I think I'm friends with you on Facebook. Yes, and I don't know about Instagram. I have an Instagram account. I get on it about twice a week. <laughs> Gavin's posting a lot on Facebook. Oh, God, oh he yeah. posts everywhere. I'll you post know, more. Yeah, because because uh, real fast before I go, God, I got to get going, guys. Before I go, uh, now things like Amazon Prime, Netflix, and those 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 type of deals, they work on and they have their very own algorithm, much like YouTube has, right? So the more people that watch your show. Does Amazon Prime Video or or Netflix push your videos up more in the search? So like, mm -hmm. when logs uh -huh. down, yeah, because oh, mm -hmm. someone look for some, and then yours is up there because more people watch it, so they push it up. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So it's important that people watch your show. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and leave reviews. If yeah, you watch, please reviews because they also work on your with. They also give reviews. They also judge you on your reviews yeah. too. Yeah. Okay, so at the moment, what should they be looking for on Amazon Prime? Uh, Paranormal Journey into the Unknown, and that's the first season is available. Season, yeah. Yeah. We have four episodes on the first season. We yeah. have Waverly, or no, not Waverly. Oh, we have Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. We have the Monroe House, the Saint Jailhouse, Albans. Saint Albans Sanatorium, Sanatorium, and the Jailhouse Pizza. Yep. yep. I watched the Jailhouse Pizza. I've seen other people go there too, but uh, your guys' episode was good. What was the one when? What name those again? You got what uh St. Albans Sanitarium. That one yeah. that, I seen that one. That was the first one. Yes. Yeah, I, I watched that one too. That was that that was pretty good. It's that weird. I know you guys. You guys are like Amazon celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a and a recording artist. Yeah, well, pretty soon, hopefully Truth or Legends is gonna get picked up by A and E or Netflix or Amazon Studios. We're not sure. All three of them are uh in the bag right now we're just trying to figure out which one's going to pick it up which which one of the th which three would you want to be on a &E. <laughs> all three right a and e <laughs> a and e yeah I, uh, i'm partial to netflix because i want i want them to fight against disney we need more adult content <laughs> <laughs> but all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and, and let you guys go i'm gonna sign off let everybody do a like a minute or two of growing okay and, uh, i gotta go and I, I hope to see you guys when i come to metropolis they're 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 keeping me out right now due to the weather so they're just mm -hmm. gonna keep me around here they know i don't like the snow not, and rain i don't and i live in florida which is nuts but i'll see you guys when i come up and thanks so much hopefully i can have you guys back again and we'll actually get into equipment next time ghosts are just more interesting your your careers are That's interesting kitty <laughs> Animals, animal. Do you ever take? Oh God, I gotta go, and you're bringing more content into my head. Do you ever take pets? Go we pets had a you. we had a Boston Terrier that was called the Paranormal Puppy. He passed away this past May, but we did take him, and it was interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the stuff that we got, we took him to an elementary school in Ohio, and there was a certain hallway that he stopped, and he was dead still in that hallway, and he would not go down it. Oh yeah, yeah. And he yelped and screamed in the middle of the night while we were there because something must have frightened him or bugged him or something. What would you rather have on a on an expedition like that? A cat or a dog? Dog. Dog. Dog has a better snout because they can smell and they can be more observant and they have better hearing than a cat does. Yeah. But Gavin also told me last week that cats see more than dogs. Well, they do, but they do. They do. 
our cat doesn't give a crap what's in the house. No, he's just stupid. <laughs> I, 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 I was saying oh, a frog. I would have. A, I would use a frog. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. Because I don't know why I would use a frog. Oh I, wow. I, I. Because they would never get scared, and I would never. Ha- I wouldn't be worried. I use <laughs> an app on my phone. New Horizon says for what? Um, I do it on my phone. I, I don't know what. I, uh, hopefully, it's a ghost thing they're talking about. <laughs> okay, everybody's saying thank you to you guys. All right, we appreciate it. Uh, Suburban is saying Netflix because not everyone has A and E. Um. Oh, we. I wanted to talk about editing software too, editing programs. Uh, well, I need to get you guys on again because I know uh, easy editing, especially for people that work all the time like me. Or they're, mm-hmm. they're, I'm traveling and I only get limited amount of time. Uh, how you guys edit the easiest way to edit. I know you guys have to really focus hard on your editing. We don't have to so much, right? But what what is good for us and and what is easy and 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 everything. And like we were talking about before the show, uh, you know, matching audio, recording audio separate, and matching it with the video and all that. So mm-hmm. maybe I can get you back on and we can kind of learn not forget the whole ghost thing for a little bit and talk about uh, matching audio and video and and stuff right. like that. I, I, okay. I'd appreciate it. it. Not a problem. Uh, uh, see, the, see, some of the conversations already turning that power director. <laughs> so I'm going to have to get you guys back on, man. <laughs> if, maybe, Jeez. maybe from the mansion, or we'll do it in the super museum. We'll take control of the whole upstairs. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Right. I'll get the keys, and we'll go in like at two o'clock in the morning. Morgan did that with me one night. We'll do that. And we'll ghost hunt in the ma- in the museum. Oh lord. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for checking in, and I'll see you when I see you. I appreciate it so much. All right. Well, thanks for having us. Uh, thank you. So, yeah, see you later, Miss Paula. Thanks for popping in. That was nice to see you. See you later, Gavin. Peace. Bye. Bye. Oh. All right, guys, real quick, I got to get going. So, I don't know how many people are in the room. Do we have anybody in here at all? Oh, we do got a lot of people in here. Hopefully, I haven't been able to keep up on this stream. There's quite a few comments. Uh, if there's any new people here, what we like to do before we sign off is if you are a content creator and you have a YouTube channel and you put content up there, type in the letters CC down below. And everybody that's in here will type the letters CC that create content. You can go to their channel. Uh, while you're in this feed, it'll open up a separate window on your mobile device or on your computer. And so we'll still be here. You can go there. You can hit the S button and the bell notification and check out their videos, leave comments, thumbs up and kind of grow a little bit. If you guys want to do the, the whole CC thing, since Bob didn't go live tonight, we have to make it up. We, ha- we have to, we have to make it up for Bob because he would do it for us. There we go. Here's some CCs, lots of them, RV kids, Lily gypsy, crystal pets. That's a new channel. Uh, I'm going to make friends with, uh following we have okay wow banisters jerry holly s'mores new horizons and and i'm gonna put this out before i split if anybody goes live i've noticed this with my live streams if uh so we're in a live stream right now or let's say you're watching uh camper life or blue wave or or uh who who else goes here jerry holly goes live a lot uh, but you may not be able to catch all of Jerry's videos. Like I wasn't able to catch them live today, but I went and watched the replay and I left comments after in the replay because the comments that are coming on the screen now don't show up in the replay. So I'm thinking the algorithm, since the algorithm loves comments and thumbs up, if you're watching a live stream and during the replay, go ahead and leave a comment afterwards because I've noticed like get lots of comments here, but when I go to see the video, tomorrow or the next day there may be one comment and 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 so youtube doesn't push it and i'm thinking if it does that with me it probably does it with a lot of you guys so anybody that's checking out live streams after they've already streamed make sure to leave a comment down below on on all their videos not you don't have to do it on mine so much but jerry holly it would be nice to see some comments on his replays RV kids. Actually, I had a thing for RV kids. I was watching one of your videos tonight. And uh, I had a problem. 
uh, one of your videos, I could not leave comments on. Uh, I'm assuming Cop, uh, Copa and, and YouTube deemed it for kids and, and they took away your comments on that video. I forget what video I was watching, but you might want to go back through your video stream and either make sure it's for adults or 13 and above or children because YouTube is going through some of these channels and because your children are on the show and stuff like that. And sometimes they'll, they'll switch it for you without you even knowing it. And I could, and I was watching one of your videos today and I couldn't leave a comment on it. So check that out if you would. And that's about it guys. Hi, Miss Donna, uh, Avengers or, or Avenger RV adventure. That's a mouthful. Every live you go to, make sure you go back and make a comment. Definitely, please do that with every, every, doesn't have to be mine, but there's a lot of people out there that go live. And like, like I was saying, Jerry Hawley's really putting an effort in and creating live videos. You should check him out and, uh, and check out his live streams and leave comments, help him grow. He needs to get up there. And James Cantonese is thinking about going live because he texted me today. So once he starts going live, make sure if you don't catch his videos live, watch the replay and make sure you comment and thumbs up the live videos too, because these comments in here are great for communicating, but I don't think they mess, they, they, they attach to the algorithm. Right. Anyway, guys, I love you. Thanks for popping in tonight. I got to get rolling down the road, get up to Atlanta, Georgia by morning, Atlanta by morning. That could be a song. Until the next time, thank you so much for popping in, guys. I love you all. Until the next time, peace out, everybody.